Hello. In this video, I want to draw and calculate a bridge with a two-dimensional setup in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So I'm going to show how to easily draw a bridge in a symmetrical way. Uh, give all these lines an equal relation and then dimension the full length of this line to be 20 meters. And it's most easy to just create the outline of the bridge with center lines and then later on draw the solid lines over it. So put a center line over here as well to line the top out and one over here. This one should be vertical as well. And now I can still dimension the height of the bridge. So I'm gonna put it to four meters. And then I can draw my solid line over the outline of this bridge. So like this. And then draw a line on the bottom and a last line on the top of this bridge. Okay, this one I still can move. So now I should have drawn the extra vertical lines over there to finish it off, but since I want to keep this video short, I'm going to end it here and I'm going to create a weldment structural member over all of these lines. So I'll choose all of these lines to create a profile over it. In that way, if I create a weldment, SOLIDWORKS will conveniently calculate this as a, a beam structure. Now I cannot choose this line because I have to create a new group for that. That's necessary to be able to get the right connection of the line for the, the drawing especially. So the connection you see over here, but they don't influence the analysis with SOLIDWORKS simulation that I'm going to do. So I'm not going to be influencing those end fixtures of these structural members. Then I'm going to save this file as bridge and then create a new simulation study to be able to analyze this. And then I should also choose a material so I'll just go for the sake of this demonstration with the material of default steel that SOLIDWORKS chooses over here, the alloy steel. As you can see now, these all these uh, beams are defined as beams and not as truss. I can influence that. I'm going to use them as beam and not as truss because in that case I can easily demonstrate the, the moment lines. So if you want all the, the bars to be able to rotate, you should be using the truss elements. So now I'm going to create the, the boundary condition for the two dimensional analyzers. So I'm going to create the fixtures. I'll choose all of the joints that SOLIDWORKS defined. So all the coupling points are called joints. I'm going to select all of them and let them not move in the, the direction perpendicular to the screen. And that can be done by the use reference geometry option. So now I shouldn't choose a straight line, but I should choose a surface. As you can see, as I when I choose a straight line, I get a limited amount of options to be able to specify boundary condition. Whereas if I choose a surface over here, uh, I shouldn't have done it like this. So if I choose a surface for the reference geometry, then I can influence six options. So it's a it's a lot more convenient. And I have to reselect all the joints. You can use a selection filter also when there's too many joints. So just use a selection filter in that case. I don't want the joints to be moving out of the screen. And on the other two directions, I don't want them to rotate out of the screen. So now with this boundary condition, you change the three dimensional analysis that you can do in SOLIDWORKS to a two dimensional one. And here you see the boundary conditions. Um, Perpendicular to the screen, I can increase them a little in size. Perpendicular to the screen, there's an arrow, so it shouldn't move. And in the other two directions, it shouldn't rotate, and that's demonstrated by these pin kind of uh, symbols. So these two are different compared to this arrow. So these two indicate the impossibility of rotation, and this one 
indicates the impossibility of movement. So now I've gone from a three-dimensional analysis to a two-dimensional one, and I can create a fixture for a simply supported situation. Search for an image over here on the internet. So if I look at this, for example, or this, this is a simply supported situation. That's a boundary condition I'm going to enter right now. So also fixed geometry, and then I'll use immovable over here. So it shouldn't move, but it can still rotate. If I choose this one, it cannot rotate and cannot move. So the situation I've chosen now allows for rotation. And then I should uh, support it on the other side with a, a rolling uh, boundary condition. In this case, that can easily be done by creating one extra reference geometry uh, restraint. For this joint, shouldn't move in... Uh, the direction perpendicular to this surface and I can choose here on the lower side and now when I enter this arrow you can see that the arrow is in the right direction it's vertical increase the size a little over here so in the vertical direction it shouldn't move which is uh, good for the simply supported situation so now I've got a, a simply supported bridge inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation and I'm ready to start calculating it. So, um, I'll enter the force. External loads. I'll enter force on the middle of this bridge, so on this joint. So I have to select this option to specify the force on a joint. And okay, this joint, and it should put a force in the direction perpendicular to this lower surface as well so, yeah. you see the force and I want it in the reverse direction and I want it a bit bigger so 10,000 Newton the weight of about one car on this bridge you see the purple arrow over the green uh, fixture so if I hide the fixture you can see the purple arrow indicating the force so then I'm uh, ready to start calculating And now I see the stress, but I don't want to see that. I want to see the beam diagram of the moments in the beams right now. So I'll choose moment in the second direction, in this case, of all the beams. And then I see the lines over here. So these are the moment lines. And it's because, in this case, not statics is used as the calculation algorithm, but uh, strength of materials. That's why there is a, a little moment in the lower beam in this case. Because if you analyze this with all trusses, you do the same analysis but only with trusses with the same force in the middle, there will be no moment anywhere because all the bars under an angle will take the vertical force in that case. But because I used beams in this case, not trusses, you see a relatively small moment. So as you can see it's only 11 Newton meter, which is quite small for such a long bridge and a force of 10,000 Newton. This moment is caused in this case by the uh, strength of material way of analyzing the simulation in this case. So I've shown how to go from a three-dimensional to a two-dimensional problem in SOLIDWORKS simulation. And then I've shown how to calculate a simply supported situation in that case. So thanks for watching.